All right, welcome to my uh, 2021 Olympic Triathlon Tokyo preview. This is going to be video one. I reckon I might get about um, three videos out between now and when the race kicks off. Uh, I've got a bit of a loose structure, sort of how I think each video will go. Um, but more or less today is going to be like a preview. Um, so I'm really excited to sort of actually start drilling into the races that have been going on already. Um, looking at the results, looking at sort of the history of the event, um, looking at what uh, the sort of layout of the Tokyo Olympic triathlon course is like and the conditions and that sort of thing. Um, and then over the next two videos, uh, we'll sort of look at the results, look at who's actually been picked in the teams. And then hopefully by video three, we're gonna put our um, our crystal ball into action and see if we can actually pick a winner. And it's got like, just having a quick look at it already, I reckon this is going to be the hardest um, Olympic triathlon event to pick that we've had so far. So the Olympic triathlon has been in the Olympics since 2000 Sydney games. Um, and I would have to say pretty much from then to 2016 at Rio, they've been a lot more um, predictable, I reckon, to pick who would win uh, versus this year. Um, obviously with the COVID uh, implications, it's uh, even made it harder. Like some of the people who possibly would have been at the top of their game last year have sort of um, had a bit of a rough ride uh, with the COVID lockdown and restrictions, um, which is kind of really hampered their preparation. So kind of put them out pretty much um, for being a contender for 2021. Um, like in saying that, I reckon there's probably 10 males who could possibly win it um, and pretty close, uh, maybe half of that, maybe, maybe half a dozen uh, females who could win it as well. So. It's really going to come down to who has luck on the day, who's prepared the best um, and tactically who races the smartest on the day, I think. Um, so I thought I'd just to start off with uh, looking at the event venue. Um, so obviously in Tokyo, Japan. So if I share my screen, um, can I have a look? So we'll go just over here first. So. First of all, the race is Monday, 26th of July is the men's individual. Next day, 27th of July is the women's individual. And then 31st of July, for the first time ever, we have the mixed relay. So the mixed relay involves uh, two men and two women um, from each country in the one team. That makes sense. Um, and they compete, each person does a shorter format of a triathlon. So each member does a swim bike run, but it's much shorter than the full Olympic distance, which is a 1500 swim, 40K ride and a 10K run. Um, but in the relay, each person does a much shorter format. And in the relay, essentially, like if you have any weak link in the female, in the, in the, um, in the relay, like say one person isn't that great a swimmer, then you do see a lot of teams get lapped in the, in the uh, relay. So it's, it's probably, it's a really interesting one to watch. It's definitely very spectator friendly. Um, so location wise, it's at the, let's see if I can pronounce this correctly, the Odeba Marine Park. Now in May, there was a triathlon, the first of the World Series in Yokohama, which is just down the road. So it gave us a good insight into some of the competitors and how they're going. So just looking here at the map, so the Odeva Marine Park, where the triathlon for the Olympics will be in four weeks time. And then down the road here, they have the Yokohama Triathlon. And I'll briefly touch on sort of how that went. Um, so not too far away. So very similar courses. Um, however, conditions will be a lot different between May and four weeks time when the Olympics is on. Um, going back. So just uh, done a little countdown timer here. So we literally have four weeks until the first race is on. So the men's triathlon. 
and the they had the there was like a selection window where very complicated i don't even understand it but basically they had a period of time of racing and then after all the racing was done all the athletes got ranked and then essentially if you had a certain amount of athletes within i think it might have even been like top 130 or something then depending on how many athletes you had inside inside that top 130 depended on how many um, slots your country got to the games so the maximum you could get was three men and three women slots uh, some countries would get to say three men and two women or one woman um, just depends on how the rankings worked out um, so Australia got the maximum slots and we're the only country to do that we got three men and three women in the games um, so with the selection window only having just closed uh, teams are only just starting to be selected um, so most teams already had like one female, one male already selected who they just said, okay, they're, they're definitely our best ones we want to pick. And then the other spots, what they call discretionary. So just, uh, each country might have their own little committee and they just get together and talk about who they think should get on the team. Uh, so Australia hasn't picked our full team yet, but apparently it's going to be very soon. Um, so I've just done a little spreadsheet trying to keep track of who uh, has been selected so far that I know of that I could sort of dig out. Um, obviously there's a lot of countries, but just trying to look at the main ones. So France, United States, United Kingdom and Spain have definitely all selected their athletes. Uh, very interesting, United Kingdom, Alistair Brownlee did not qualify. So Alistair Brownlee is the two time Olympic champ at the moment. Um, he didn't qualify. Uh, he did get disqualified in the last race, which I think did impact it, but I don't know if he was going to make it anyway. He just hasn't been been doing more long course racing, and I don't think he had enough uh, high rank, high enough ranking. Um, scrolling down a little bit, um, Norway definitely has theirs picked. They've got three guys and one female. I haven't been able to track down the name of the female who's qualified. Belgium, I'm pretty sure these two guys uh, will be picked, but I'm not sure if it's been finalised. Switzerland, Nicola, Nicola Spirik, who is like an absolute just phenomenal athlete. She's like a mother of three now, maybe, and she's won one gold and one silver at the Olympics. She got silver in 2016 and she's backing up again, which is just phenomenal. Um, and just these other countries here, I don't know if they're 100% selected, uh, but I'm pretty sure these athletes, I'm pretty sure Laura Lindemann from Germany has been selected, um, but these other ones, I'm pretty sure they will get picked, but I don't know if it's been finalised. So I'm going to try and keep this one updated and then hopefully within a week's time, you would think we would have, I'd be able to flesh this out a bit more, we'll be able to get a bit of a look at the start list. Um, so we know who's starting and we can start to look at their prospects a bit closer. Um, what's next? So looking at conditions and we might compare the conditions that we expect to have in um, the games versus the sort of most recent triathlon they had in Tokyo. So down the road here at Yokohama, there was a race in May and it was like the first international world series race since the lockdown and everything. So a lot of the athletes hadn't really raced in, you know, some in like 18 months, uh, but it was a good to see who was willing to travel, who could travel um, and just to see what form people were in sort of, uh, I guess, coming out of lockdown into a, um, not a full field, not a full international field, but, a pretty pretty strong international field. So conditions. Um, so conditions at the Yokohama one. Just to give you an indication, uh, the air temperature was like twenty six degrees, and compared to the games, it's expect, expected to be over thirty degrees. And the water temperature at Yokohama in May was about 20.6 degrees. And in July, when we have the actual Olympics, will be more than 30 degree water temperature. So that's quite significant. So that's why we're seeing a lot of the athletes doing heat training. A lot of the Aussies have spent a couple of weeks um, training up in Cairns. 
and uh, we've got a couple of Aussies training internationally as well. Uh, so who can handle the heat will be very interesting on the day. So it's going to be like a really tough race. You're going to see some, some possibly see some spectacular explosions, which would be so awesome to see as they all try and um, do their best. Um, but just to give you an indication of like the form that we had some of these athletes and we can start to sort of narrow down who to keep our eyes on. Um, in the men's triathlon at Yokohama, so a few months ago. So just uh, pause the video here. So this is from Yokohama, the elite men in May. So the top four coming off the bike uh, was this German fellow. I think his name is Schaffman, a uh, Belgian guy, how I pronounce his name, I think it's Yelligens is his name. Christian Blumenfeld from Norway and Alex Yi from UK, young fella. He was the last one picked in the UK team. So these guys all came off the bike together and then it ended up coming down to Yelligens and Christian Blumenfeld for the end and Christian Blumenfeld won. So that's not to say the other guys aren't as good as him or that people further back aren't as good as him. But it just shows that, you know, come May, he was in very good shape and he went on to win the race. So it came down to these two guys there. These guys fell off the back. And keep your eyes on this Morgan Pearson guy. He did really well from America. Come back a little bit. So you had these two guys off the front. Alex Yee dropped back and Morgan Pearson was behind on the bike and he ran his way into third. So he's running really strongly. Uh, so just bear in mind, obviously first race of this sort of official season. Um, so not necessarily race fit and a lot cooler than what it'll be in Yokohama. In the women's field at Yokohama, basically it was a breakaway of these two girls off the bike. Um, you had this uh, American athlete here, Taylor Nib and from the Netherlands, Maya Kingma. So they both broke away on the bike. And basically like Maya Kingma was a lot more technically better on the bike. She was negotiating the harder parts of the course quicker, but Taylor and would sort of gap Taylor, but then Taylor would, she just had raw power on the straights and that sort of thing and would um, basically take the lead going on the straights. So this was a pretty easy one to watch. Um, obviously, these two are in great form. They rode really strongly um, together, broke away, and eventually Taylor Nib um, ran away for the win. And Maya King actually ended up coming third. And a girl by the name of Summer Rappaport from America came second in that one. So that was... Uh, sort of Yokohama just gave us an insight into who's who in the zoo and allows us to start sort of looking at some contenders. Uh, so like some other things to sort of think about, I thought with, you know, trying to pick a winner as such, things to consider was like race fitness as well. Um, I think a, a lot of the athletes who aren't trying to travel or aren't able to travel and race, I think they're going to be very, um, disadvantaged because you could easily see like over the past um, there's been a few of these international races since May you can actually see a, some of the athletes actually getting fitter as they do more racing um, so I think like that's going to be a big um, impact um, you know I think obviously depending on which country they've come from and how severe the restrictions have been like in some countries they haven't been able to swim for like a year uh, or not quite a year, but where there's a big chunk of time where pools were closed and that sort of thing. So they couldn't swim. So the swim training suffered. Um, so, and there's also like with the quarantine and the travel restrictions, when they go to Tokyo, they're basically going to arrive a couple of days before their event sort of thing, go into a hotel quarantine more or less in tiny rooms. Like these aren't lux you know, they're not, not bad rooms, but they're not like luxurious in space. This is Japan. It's a very uh, small country and you've got to put a lot of people in there. So the hotel rooms are very small. Um, 
So how some of these athletes deal with that is going to be interesting. And I don't know if it's a good thing if you have done a lot of traveling and have had to deal with this, you get used to it. Or if having done it a few times, it sort of drives you mad. So that could be an impact. Um, yeah, so th there's a few other things to consider other than just like what form are athletes in. I think the restrictions and the environment around which they have to travel and train and get prepared to race could have an impact as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see who's who, um, but we've got four weeks to go. Not all the teams are being picked, but hopefully by the next video, we will all the countries will have their athletes picked. We'll be able to sort of list them out and start to go through and narrow down who has potential to win or podium. And uh, we can look at it a bit deeper then. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, it's going to be very exciting. Four weeks to go. And uh, let's see who can take it out. All right. Catch you later.